All right, so if I were to ask you a question, and if I tell you that anyone in this room right now can make over $5,000 a month, and that doesn't include a nine to five job, so basically you choose your own hours, it doesn't require any specific qualification or past experience, all it requires is interaction within the community and neighborhood. Would you believe me? And I'm not talking about any of those online scams that you see for making easy money. What I'm talking about is a new phenomena that is disrupting our life to a great extent and making it better and better by day. It's called collaborative consumption or sharing economy. Now, as most of you know, collaborative consumption is a socioeconomic process of people sharing with each other rather than actually buying it from a corporation. So now think about it this way. You might have a car or an extra room in your house, or you might have just time that you want to actually put in and make money. That is what is creating micro entrepreneurs. There are a few examples for collaborative consumption. Now, your car that you own, according to a research, 23 hours out of 24 hours a day, it's not being used. So you can utilize get around to actually find someone and rent it out to them. Or if you have an extra room in your house or even a couch or a condo, you can actually rent it out on Airbnb. Similarly, you can actually take a loan from someone within your community through Lending Club. So the possibilities are limitless in this. I personally got inspired by Sharing Economy back in 2012 when I was faced with a very basic problem. One fine evening, my mom was washing the dishes and all of a sudden she accidentally broke the faucet. Now, there was a huge mess. There was literally a mini flood and everyone was freaking out. But since we didn't personally know a plumber, I decided to go to online classified website and look for someone to help come fix that faucet. So what I noticed was that there was tons of listings and there wasn't any specific code. And I picked up the phone and I started making phone calls and eventually ended up with a guy who came to my house. He did a terrible job and charged me three times of what I was willing to pay on it. Now, I was disappointed in this whole transaction and I wanted to leave a bad review for this person so nobody else would hire it. And I'm pretty sure because I wasn't able to do it, he might have gotten few other jobs the very next day. Now, around the same time, I was graduating from University of Toronto. And with the graduating batch, everyone was desperate to land a job they wanted. Around that time, it, the economy was still recovering, so it was very hard to find the right job for yourself. So students started resorting to odd jobs. I sat down with my brother in the BO, and we started analyzing these two problems. On one hand, we have people who are looking to get help with their daily task, but couldn't find someone reliable in their community. And on the other hand, we have people who are desperately looking to make money and to make ends meet. Now, that skill isn't just limited to a plumber. Someone could be really good at guitar, so they can give guitar lessons, or somebody could be a really good cook, so he can help out someone in, in their neighborhood and cook a meal for someone. That's when we came up with the idea of Ask for Task. Now, askfortask.com is an online platform that connects people together to get their daily tasks done in a safe and reliable environment. It could be anything on your to-do list. It could be cleaning to just general household chores in your house, or could be something online, like design my website. All you have to do is just you post the task, name the price you're willing to pay for it, and when it's due by. We have over 150,000 Canadians who are looking to do these kind of jobs. So as soon as your job is offered, you will start receiving a lot of offers from the people in your area. And now based on the price and the reviews, you can assign the job to the best person. Now notice I do just use the word reviews. Why are reviews so important to actually get the right person? The best thing about collaborative consumption is that it runs on a very important fundamental, and that is trust. Trust amongst the peers is really important for the sharing economy to work well. 
So after every single transaction, both the parties have to leave a detailed review about how the whole transaction went. A typical review would include a five-star rating and then how friendly the person was, how well they did the job, and if they would recommend it to other people. This increases the credibility within the community. Now the leaders in collaborative consumption, the companies that are offering, have started to offer insurance on each and every job that gets done, whether it's an exchange of an asset or just sharing help. And through that insurance, there is an added peace of mind that if there was a misfortunate event that happened, there would be someone who would cover the damages. Now when you think about it, this is how sharing economy gets efficient. Now people are not just resorting to one marketplace. They can be utilizing services in one place and might be offering services another one. Let me share a story with you. I had a chance to actually talk with someone in our community. His name is Colin. He's from Little Italy, Toronto. Um, he's in his mid-50s and he recently got laid off because of some mobility issues. So now he feels like he's just stuck in house and he wanted to do something with his life. And more than that, he wanted to cover up for the income that he's losing on a monthly basis. So he, along with his wife, decided to rent out part of their house on Airbnb. So it's been almost a year since they've been doing this. And within that time, they have made over $15,000 just renting out space to strangers. And when I talked to him, it was more about making meaningful connections with people coming to Toronto from all over the world. And that is something he was more happy about. Now, he's offering his services on Airbnb, but on the other hand, right after a guest leaves the house, he calls someone from Ask for Task to come and clean up the house. So it's as simple as that. And then he started consuming services from that end. In fact, he recently installed the Uber app, and now if any guest needs a ride, he can easily call them for that as well, just to give them a better experience and to get a better review. Now, as I mentioned, as sharing economy hasn't really been there for a long time, but it has been adapted by masses. And if you look at the numbers, over 80 million people in US are currently using sharing economy, and there are over 10 million sharers in Canada alone. This is what we're talking about on the macro level. One specific event that recently happened, the FIFA World Cup in Brazil, it was slightly different from any other FIFA that has happened. Why? Because one in five people who visited Brazil stayed on Airbnb. That accounts for over 120,000 people letting strangers all over the world stay at their home while they're visiting their country. This is amazing. Another interesting story I want to share with you guys is about a girl. Her name is Sydney Johnston. She's 21 years old and she's originally from Barrie. Now, she has over six years experience in customer service, but along the time, she went from being a full-time employee to a part-time and not even getting enough hours to support herself. See, she recently got married and they decided to move from Barrie to Brampton. Now, along the transition, she came across Ask for Task through one of her friends. So she decided to sign up for a tasker. Now, since she was in the new neighborhood, she didn't really know anyone which helped her actually make meaningful connections while she does tasks for them. So what happened was, within a few months, currently she's averaging over $4,500 a month just running tasks, doing household cleaning, or just regular personal assistance for people in her neighborhood. Now, I asked her a very specific question. How does she feel when she goes to someone's house? And how is she treated? Her answer blew me away. She said, whenever she goes to any house, 
she is treated like a friend, like a neighbor, like someone they can trust. They don't treat her like an employee of, of a company or, or a cleaner, per se. And more interestingly, she and her husband are expecting their first child now. So she has made some very meaningful connections within the community with the new moms and has gotten extremely good advices from them. In fact, some of them have gone as far as offering the toys or the strollers that they don't use anymore. So what I think and what I firmly believe in is that sharing economy is our future. And the main driver for sharing economy is empowerment. When people are empowered to make their own decisions, to make their own time, to interact with new people within the community, it creates something that a regular corporation can compete with. And now that technology has grown so fast, it has enabled us to interact with people on the scale that was unimaginable before. And what I think is that this is just the beginning of this movement. We don't even know the extent to which it is going to grow. And that's the best part about it. So just revisiting one thing that I asked you in the very beginning. Would you believe me? So what do you think? Thank you. <laughs>